talking Mythica Stormbound from 2023 and this is directed by Jake Storman who was actually an actor from the previous Mythica movies. That's right this is actually a continuation from the Mythica series and effectively is both part six of that series but also functioning as a kind of reboot or retooling for new viewers. So this movie takes place I think 19 years after the end of the last movie. So we have largely a new cast of characters. Now the Mythica movies prior to this, um, all five of them were produced by Arrow Storm Entertainment, an independent production company whose movies I've quite enjoyed. Um, however, I wasn't overly keen on the Mythica franchise, to be honest. I believe it originally was envisioned as a three-part story, but ended up being five. And I have to be honest with you, I found the movies to be lacklustre. Um, a little bit dull, a little bit um, not all that interesting. I mean, you can watch the reviews on the channel. So how does this kind of quasi-reboot follow-on stack up? Well, let's discuss the plot. So if it's effectively the fantasy version of Hateful Eight. It focuses on a group of strangers gathering in a tavern, like an inn, on a stormy, a stormy night, and um, there's various different people with, for, with with different backgrounds and motivations. It mainly focuses on a character called the Stranger, played by Will Kemp, who you may know as the Wolfman from the Van Helsing movie with Hugh Jackman. And he is our kind of a point of view character, but we have a bunch of other ones, including like uh, a dwarf who's a tavern owner, a couple of slaves, um, uh, a, a kind of like a couple of like rangers or all kind of magistrate types and a couple of others as well. And there seems to be a new magical evil that seems to be uh, ra raising its head, so to speak. Um, what will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So, let's talk about what works in this movie's favour. And as I've said, I've quite enjoyed Arrow Storm's movies, although I vastly prefer their standalone films to their series of Mythica, because I found the, the story to be very dragged out. And um, is that true of this one? This movie takes a little bit of a different approach to the previous Mythica movies, in a way. I feel this has kind of been influenced a little bit like Game of Thrones, where the focus is more on character building and the character interactions and also kind of like machinations, betrayals, secrets. So I feel the... the, uh, the Obviously, the success of the Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon has obviously made this franchise pivot slightly into more of a kind of somewhat kind of political game style uh, movie, at least in this one. Because let me tell you, this is very much a setup film. But what does work? I mean, Arrowstorm clearly is a huge fan of the fantasy genre, and as such, I think. Great care has been taken with things like the costuming, the props, the location shooting, the set design. I think any, anything in, in regards to that, the physical world that Arrowstorm has created for this universe, I think looks like it's been made with care, attention to detail, and I think looks ripe as a fantasy setting. That I all quite liked. And the, I think the movie does benefit from having a little bit more in-depth characters and the blank slates that were the kind of the previous uh, characters in this franchise. Um, we learn we have these characters have their own motivations, as I say, and some are a little bit more surreptitious than others. Others might be more altruistic. I obviously won't say more than that. But again, 
a little bit more kind of in-depth character work here. That definitely benefits this movie, I think, in the long run. Um, if you're a fan of more dramatic style movies, as I say, this film takes a lot of cues from The Hateful Eight, along with kind of Game of Thrones, to make it more of a um, psychological movie in a, in a way. The games that people play, which, you know, may be of interest to some, and I think, again... It's a bit of a double-edged sword, but I think at least it, it gives for, for some, some interesting motivations for some of the characters uh, and kind of a little bit of a backstory and stuff like that. We do get a little bit of action towards the end of the movie, but ultimately this is more people talking in rooms than anything else, to be honest. Um, I think Will Kemp makes a likeable kind of lead character here, and I think he was... Uh, probably the strongest actor in this movie. There are a couple of other actors who I think do a pretty decent job. Uh, the kind of the two sort of lawmen types, uh, one who's like an elf and one of those other guys like an Cockney, I think do a, a, a fairly good job uh, with their kind of their characters as well, making quite interesting and kind of fun sorts of characters. But let me just transition to what does not work. Like I said, this movie is just a setup film. I mean, I, I think the Arrowstorm as a, as a company, they, they've invested into this Mythica franchise, but I feel um, they're, they're more interested in having an overarching story compared to having an interesting movie on its own. And this is always the problem, I think, when you get like movies like um, the Mission Impossible recent movies, you know, they've made part... Dead Reckoning Part 1, and then no one's really interested in that movie, so they've really shot themselves in the foot for Part 2. The, the way to go is to make it, you know, an organic, self-contained movie, and if there's a demand for it, then make a sequel. But this is more of just making a deliberate series of, of, of movies. So this one really fills all the setup with very, very little payoff. Um, and it is mostly talking in rooms. I mean, this movie is pretty much an hour and 20 minutes of talking in rooms and then another 15 minutes or so of going outside and doing things. Uh, which brings me to the next point. This is a hell of a lot of exposition. Uh, this is just a... The first 40 minutes is just a massive exposition dump. My God. Um... It is just lots of telling and not showing. Uh, obviously, it's trying to indoctrinate new viewers to this series uh, by effectively recapping a lot of what's happened in the, the last Mythic Mythica films, but also fleshing out what has happened to these new characters um, prior to that and obviously between the films. So it's a lot of people sitting in a room telling us about things that we don't see on screen. Um, you know, and I have to be honest with you, the, as I say, I think the Mythica series as a whole is somewhat lacklustre because the concept just feels way too drawn out. And it's true of this movie as well. There's just not enough story, uh, to, to warrant a, a movie which is effectively an act one of what is clearly meant to going to be, uh, another at least trilogy of films. I've mentioned I quite like some of the actors, but on the converse side of that, there are some performances that are on the weaker side. There are some characters that massively overact, and other, there are other actors that just can't act at all. Uh, one in particular I found particularly distractingly bad, although I won't point out exactly who that is. You can make your own mind up if you, if you kind of watch the film. Ultimately, as I mentioned, this movie is very much just a, a, a people talking in rooms. And as such, visually speaking, outside of the, the nice set design, it isn't particularly kind of thrilling. And we do get a little bit of action towards the end. and it's But it's largely kind of drag and drop Adobe effect style um, CGI kind of layovers. Which, to be honest with you, don't look particularly strong. Um... There's a lot of talking about characters from other films. If you want a drinking game, have a drink every time they mention the name Merrick. Um, I, hate, I think overall this movie is marginally better than the majority of the previous uh, Mythica movies because I think it benefits from having a little bit more stronger characterization. 
but ultimately I still find this series to be a lacklustre fantasy uh, entry. I know it has its fans, I know the, the series to this point have had fans. I wish they would make more self-contained stories and then if it weren't a sequel then, uh, you know, do one. But the the insistence here to have this movie is effectively as an act one makes it for a somewhat dull affair with questionable acting, questionable VFX and questionable pacing. I'll give it a 5 out of 10 because I do think there is some um, elements that it does improve on but overall it's, if you like the previous Mythica movies, it's not that much uh, of a, a, you know, a difference from those ones outside of its slightly different character driven uh, approach. But again, I think the, the other Mythica movies were still all pretty drawn out. Five out of ten, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.